Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we're going to be talking about the best top laners for every elo. The champs in League are not always one size fits all. Different picks get wildly different results depending on the skill bracket that you're in. It makes sense with the high skill floor is going to generally do better in high elo and pro play than it would be in bronze or iron. But it's a two way street. There are also plenty of picks that do better in lower ranks than they do in higher levels. For example, Shivana overall has the 5th highest win rate of any top laner across all ranks, but in D2+, she's about a 49% win rate. So while you may be able to hard carry and lower elo with her, if you're in the top 1%, she's a troll pick. Then we have Poppy. A lot of high elo players would argue that Poppy is one of the most elo inflating champions in the game, saying that she's basically the Janna of top lane. Whether that's true or not in high elo, it certainly isn't in the lower ranks. If you look at her win rate in bronze, it's under 47%. Tanks are typically thought of as a super mindless pick that takes a little to no skill to pull off, so why wouldn't it make sense that she actually does better in low elo? Well, not exactly. Comboing with Poppy is pretty simple. You charge your foe, preferably into a wall, and then smack them with a Q. But the timing of your trades, as well as using her W and passive correctly, really play a huge part in how your laning goes. Unlike other tanks, Poppy doesn't really have a go button for teamfights. You can maybe flash charge to make a pick, but she doesn't really count as an engaged champion. So you don't have that factor to fall back on if you're behind in the mid and lane game. You have to be ahead so you can contend as a strong side laner, since that's 90% of what you'll be doing in most games. The end result is just that she's just too hard for low elo and even a lot of middle elo players to execute. The reason for champs being bad in certain situations and certain elos comes down to two general reasons. The first is that champ is too mechanically difficult for players in those elos. Again, we'll use Poppy as our example. Her basic EQ combo is very easy, but using her W and passive perfectly, as well as actually making the most of your ultimate, actually requires some skills and decision making. The second reason is that the champion needs a team to play around with and around it. For example, Jace is one of the stronger laners in the top lane, but to use him correctly, you have to be super aggressive. This means that you're always playing forward in lane, and as a result, always at risk of the enemy jungler paying your lane a visit. In pro play, junglers will always play around a lane like this, giving them the strong side treatment. But in solo queue, even at a challenger level, you can't always rely on this unless you know your jungler. Even then, you need a bot lane that can help and accept being the weak side. If your jungler is always in the top lane, he won't be bot side to bail them out if they get ganked over and over. That's why you see such bad results with him at all elos. Okay, so we talked about what makes a champ bad, but what qualifies for them being good? Mirroring our first reason for a champion being bad, the mechanical skill floor of a champion has to match the elo the player is in. We talked about Shivana earlier. The reason that she does so well in lower elos is that she's super easy to play. The lower in elo you go, the more common it is to see people just fight to the death in lane. It's quite fun. Shivana is a really strong duelist, and there's no hard to land skill shots or abilities that you need to time. You just hit your foe, ignite them, and profit. Harder laners like Fiora or Camille do pretty badly until you get to the top of the ladder, where players have insane mechanics to pull them off. The second thing that makes certain champions good in certain elos is a big factor that a lot of people don't realize. Everyone knows that League has a general meta to it depending on the overall state of the game. If enchanters are OP, then hyper carries are probably OP as well. If those bot laners are OP, then assassins tend to be weak, and tanks tend to be strong since they can frontline for those hyper carries. But a less thought out concept is that different skill levels also have their own meta. For example, split pushing is generally a pretty reliable tactic in solo queue, but it's especially good in lower ranks, where players are even less coordinated. It's very easy for a champion to snowball fast in a side lane and take over the game. But before we get into the main course for today, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches of our ProGuides.com. Our meta videos and other content like this are a great way to give you guys a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you'll want to go ahead and check those guys out. They're all top level players and they're available 24-7, just waiting to share everything that they know with you. So stop grinding your face into the wall alone and head over for some professional help now. Now let's get on to our picks for the best top laners in each elo. We'll of course be starting off in iron. The pick that we have for this level of play is Dr. Mundo. In line with everything that we said before, you want something that is mechanically easy to play and not super team reliant when you're looking for what's broken in the lowest elo on the ladder. Mundo definitely checks off both those boxes. His only skill shot is actually pretty easy to land, and being a juggernaut means that he's able to fill the role of a frontliner and damage dealer at the same time. With a decent lead, you can quite literally dive through the entire enemy team and bring down their backline carries. Mundo really does go where he pleases, at least in iron. Now let's look at what we want for a bronze pick. Like we touched on earlier, split pushing is just an overall ground good strat at all levels of solo queue, but it's especially good in the lower ranks since teams are less coordinated and cooperative. It can be really easy to pick up steam in the side lane, and by the time help does arrive for your opponent in the lane, it can be often too late, since OP split pushers usually have tools to 1v2. Objectively speaking, champs like Jax and Fiora are the gods of this playstyle, but they're also pretty mechanically difficult to pull off. 
and that's why our pick for this rank is Yorick. He's not quite as 1v9 as those two picks, but he's super easy to use, and you'll find more consistent results with him. His landing phase is also quite a bit stronger, especially post 6. When landing against a melee champion, it can be borderline impossible for your foe to do anything once you summon your maiden of the mist. Even moving up to kill a minion can lead to them being heavily punished. Next up, our silver pick is Nasus. Again, this is another super strong pick that can really take over the game if left to farm up, and it doesn't take as long to reach that point as a lot of people think, and you can't really blame them for that misconception. Usually when you hear the champ is quote unquote infinitely scaling, it wouldn't make sense that they ramp up over the course of the game and are going to be at their strongest in the end stages. But Nasus actually spikes hardest in the mid game, and actually falls off a bit if the game goes to super late. I mean, if a game goes on for a super, super long time, obviously his stacks will get to the point where he can one-shot everyone. But realistically, the vast majority of games are over by 50 minutes, and Nasus spikes hardest between 30 and 40 minutes. The reasoning for this is that as people reach 6 items, damage dealers start to shred through Nasus. In the mid game, he's just the right mix of being super tanky and doing huge amounts of damage. He can very easily take on 2 or even 3 opponents that come to stop him in the side lane, and with Ghost Thumb, he can even hard carry teamfights. For gold, the pick that we're going with is Garen. While Garen is definitely one of the most noob friendly champions in the game, he's not just limited to being good in the lower elos. In fact, he's one of the highest performing champions across all ranks. His landing phase is insanely strong, with a hard hitting combo that will allow you to trade heavily with your foe, and a passive that lets you sustain up between fights. Garen is one of the hardest champions in the game to counterplay when he's strong, giving him some insane snowball potential. The main weakness Juggernauts have is being kited, but with his Q speeding him up and removing slows, and his W allowing him to shrug off some hard CC, he doesn't really have to worry about that. He can pretty easily get onto any target you want in fights and easily 100 to 0 them. For Plaid, the pick that we have is Olaf. While their kits are nothing alike, Olaf kind of plays out a lot like Garen. He's a pretty snowball reliant champion, so you want to try to force early fights as much as you can to get a lead. It doesn't really take much effort to do that. From level 1, his damage is really high, with his resetting axes allowing you to chase down foes that disrespect you and get up too close. Seriously, if a foe lets you land an axe at level 1, you can usually pop Ghost and Ignite and just all in them right off the rip. For Diamond, the pick that we have is Shen. As you get to the higher ranks of the ladder, team play becomes more and more relevant. Everyone in these ranks are pretty good mechanically, so having macro starts to weigh out more and more. And what better pick for that than Shen? While he's technically a tank, Shen plays out like a bruiser for the majority of the game. He's pretty much on par with the champs in the class when it comes to side laning. I'd say a good Shen can even go toe-to-toe -to -toe against even the duelists like Fiora and Camille, even in the mid game if played correctly. And he does kind of counter Camille, so. Not to oversimplify things, but Shen's game plan is pretty easy to execute. You just shove a side lane to the turret, and if no one is there, you get a free tower. If someone is there, your team forces a fight and you can ult in to make a 5v4. This is especially easy to pull off in the upper elo, since your team is way more likely to actually listen and execute a play like this than in the lower ranks. Due to the lack of sample size, it can be pretty difficult to look at what the best picks are for Challenger and even Grandmaster. So instead of looking at all three of the top ranks separately, we'll be lumping them all together in the category that we'll call Master Plus. And the pick that we think is the very best for this is Darius. This may be a bit surprising for a lot of you, but Darius is actually one of the champions that does better the higher you go in rank. Remember our talk about Jace earlier, how he has to be played aggressively to win lane, and how that leaves him open to jungle ganks? Well, Darius is pretty similar to that, but unlike Jace, Darius actually has the ability to turn jungle ganks into winnable fights, even early game. But it requires pretty good mechanics actually, since you need to be able to dodge abilities while also landing that sweet spot of his Q in the middle of a fight. Even in Diamond, you'll rarely see that, but in Master Plus, the players typically are able to pull it off. And once Darius wins a single fight like that, the game is pretty much over. He can just ghost on cooldown and force kills once ahead, and there's not much anyone can do about it. As with other Juggernauts, his one weakness is being kited, but by running ghost and building Deadman's play, he's able to completely ignore that and completely steamroll fights. And that wraps up things for our best top laners in every elo. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Now that we've reached the end, comment your rank and what you main down in the comments below. Maybe it's time for you to reconsider what you're putting all your time into, or maybe let us know what you think are the best picks for each rank. I can't wait to see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.